Good day, everyone. You're welcome to this week's Business and Investment Tips program, a production of Christchurch Radio with Ayo Deji Ibo, an investment professional. This week, the focus is on the impact of Nigeria's rising debt stock on the economy and your investments. Last week, the Debt Management Office, DMO, published Nigeria's total public debt, state and federal government data as of the end of the first quarter of 2022. The report showed that Nigeria's total debt stock, domestic and foreign, was at 41.6 trillion naira or $100.1 billion. This implies a quarter-on-quarter increase of 5.2% or 2.1 trillion naira from 39.6 trillion naira in the fourth quarter of 2021 and a year-on-year rise of 25.7% or 8.5 trillion from 33.1 trillion naira in the first quarter of 2021. Furthermore, the report revealed that domestic debt accounts for 60.1% of the total debt stock at 24.98 trillion naira while external debt makes up the remainder of 16.6 trillion naira or 39.9 percent a breakdown of the federal government's total domestic debt as of march 2022 showed that federal government bonds was highest with 70 percent or 14.2 trillion naira followed by treasury bills and promissory notes with 21.8 percent or 4.4 trillion naira and 3.8% or 762.5 billion naira respectively. A promissory note is a written promise that one party will pay the other party by a specified time. Promissory notes are sovereign instruments, negotiable and have liquid asset status but are not interest-bearing. The federal government uses promissory notes to settle outstanding obligations to service providers like construction companies amongst others. Given the consistent rise in the debt stock, expenditure on debt servicing has risen in tandem. As of the first quarter of 2022, debt service costs came in at 896.8 billion naira, up to 46.3% from the 613.1 billion naira expended on the debt in the first three months of 2021. The huge resources being spent on the debt service along with the associated risks, notably exchange rate risk on the country portfolio of dollar denominated loans raises the question of sustainability of the country's debt management strategy. Debt sustainability refers to a country's ability to finance the debt obligations without external help. There are mainly two most common metrics used to measure debt sustainability, which are the debt GDP ratio, which compares the size of a country's debt to its GDP, and the debt servicing to revenue ratio. This relates how much a country pays in debt servicing to its actual revenue in a given period. While our debt position appears healthy at 23.9% relative to Nigeria's GDP size of 173.5 trillion naira in 2021 and within the DMO's acceptable debt limit of 40%, our debt servicing to revenue ratio of over 90% in 2021 will suggest that our debt is unsustainable. This means that out of every 100 naira revenue the federal government earned, 90 naira was used for debt servicing, which leaves little to nothing for a non-debt recurrent expenditure, not to mention capital expenditure. This reveals the persistent heavy reliance on debt to finance outstanding expenditure. It is worth noting that the Ways and Means, which is the borrowings from the CBN, which has grown significantly in the last few years, was not reported. We think the federal government needs to boost its revenue to improve debt affordability amid the revenue shortage brought on by the poor performance of the oil sector. On the external front, multilateral loans from the World Bank and African Development Bank groups accounted for 47.4% of external debt, followed by commercial loans, euro bonds and diaspora bonds, which stood at $15.9 billion or 39.8% of external debt. Meanwhile, bilateral debt was a total of $4.5 billion or 11.3% of external debt, mainly split between China, Exim Bank of China at $3.6 billion or 81.4% and France Agner Francaise Development with $567 million or 12.6%. Now let's discuss the implications of Nigeria's debt structure and the financing needs. One. 
weak growth and high inflation. The federal government's growing debt means that government resources will be diverted towards interest payments, leaving less resources to be invested in growth-stimulating sectors, which could take a toll on the economic growth. Moreover, investors may start to question the government's ability to repay debts and may therefore demand even higher interest rates, especially for external debts. A rapid increase in the rates will make the debt more expensive and challenging to achieve debt sustainability. In the worst-case scenario, where the CBN continues to fund government spendings without putting a rein on the money supply, there could be a situation of hyperinflation, which is inflation at 50% or more. 2. Inability of the private sector to borrow with the federal government competing for funding with the private sector in the capital markets, investors will demand a higher premium from corporates as government instruments are considered risk-free. Rising interest rates will limit new investment in business, equipment and other operations as businesses will face a higher cost of capital which could harm innovation and slow the advancement of new breakthroughs. 3. Lower stock market returns. A higher debt implies that the government will issue more debt securities to finance its budget deficit, which could result in the higher interest rates, my lower stock market returns. Additionally, higher interest rates in the fixed income market make the stock market less attractive due to volatility. Similarly, higher rates increase the cost of borrowings for companies, thereby reducing the declared profits and returns to shareholders. Higher interest rates also lower stock valuation and could force sell-offs. 4. Higher fixed income yields A higher debt position is expected to push yields up in the fixed income space, making newer issues more attractive. This presents good opportunities for investors in mutual funds, especially fixed income, as the return is expected to improve. 5. Higher premium for eurobond issuance. In the face of rising interest rates in the US and the pockets of uncertainty in the political events, it is important to note that subsequent issuance of eurobonds will be conducted at a higher premium to attract investors. Although yields appear attractive in the secondary market, we advise that investors approach the market cautiously. Thank you for listening. Please join us same time next week for another exciting and insightful session. For questions, comments, and feedback, kindly forward to info at getfinanceandinvestmenttips.com or send an SMS to 070-8246-3747. Stay blessed.